Hello and welcome to the AI workshop. I am your host Badr and today we're going to learn how to install your full AI stack all in one place. I've been in IT for longer than I can remember and I've been in multinational companies but since a while I've been focusing on AI but I've noticed that it is so widespread, it is so difficult actually to get a grip on it. It is so difficult to have your automations all in one place without paying for a lot of services out there, right? So this channel will be dedicated to bringing AI to your local servers and have that under your control so you don't have to pay for that extra money and you have also your data privacy which is important right so without further ado let's dive right into it by the end of this video you're gonna have all this stack running locally on your vps or local machines so you're gonna have caddy flowwise n8n olama open web ui Portain or Qdrens, the Superbase stack, uh, and Redis search engine X for all your local uh, searches, and everything will be running. And uh, also, it's on HTTPS, so it's secured. It's accessible online. So today we're gonna install everything all at once, and we're gonna use for that Linux in this case, and. We're going to use this uh, repository, this GitHub repository, which is a um, local AI package maintained by Colleen. Great guy, actually, who's done a lot of uh, great things in, uh, in AI. He has uh, another project called Archon, which we're going to dive in very soon. And this one is a real gem. We're going to have Olama. If you have a good GPU, I suggest you install Olama. Otherwise, or use it. Otherwise, you can use uh, any... Uh, uh, LLM online out there and there are many free ones that you can use. Open Web UI will allow us to have a web UI which we can interact with very easily. Uh, Flowwise is another uh, no-code, low-code uh, agent builder uh, which which works very well with, with N8 and we're going to see that as well. Qdrens here is a, a vector database and uh, we have search engine x which serves as a local search engine so uh, the prerequisites as i said so you need a vps or a local machine with linux installed you can use a uh, four gigabytes eight gigabytes ram four cpus so something like a, like a vps which costs uh, around six to ten dollars a month would be enough for this um, on the other hand, we're going to use uh, Lightning.ai. So if you don't know what Lightning.ai is, it's uh, it's basically a kind of a VPS, but uh, you can have multiple machines running all at once. So here I, uh, I have my studio, and you can see that there are a lot of machines here. So each model is basically a, uh, a separate uh, VM and uh, they give you free credits which you can use for gpu or cpu so we're going to use this today and we're going to install uh, this whole package inside i will leave a link in the description where you can uh, have a have an account created uh, anyway let's go to the installation part so i assume that you have python git and docker installed and once you do that if you don't have them you can just click on the links i'll leave everything down in the description so and we're gonna jump in here and we're gonna paste this allow navigate to the repository and here we'll see we have to basically copy the dot env example to dot env and then uh, put some values in here and I'm going to show you also how to put those values, so don't worry. To do that, we're just going to, we can just come here and do, and copy this one, or just rename it, but just for the sake of it, copy .env, .env, and we have our new file. I'm going to open that here, just for ease of use. And uh, here we're going to have to fill a few keys 
in here. Uh, we will generate that using a website. So if we go here, we can can go to this link and it's going to redirect us to this page. We can just take some of these values and use them. Uh, and don't worry, this machine is going to be down uh, when, uh, when we're done with that. So uh, we're just going to get another key here and paste that in the encryption key, let's say. And we can just refresh that page, get some other keys, which are going to be generated automatically here. And we can fill up the rest. So let's say, yeah, my super password. <laughs> so I don't suggest you, you do that, but uh, this is my super password in here. Of course, this is for testing purposes and not for uh, deployment, not for production. So keep that in mind. For the sake of this, I'm going to leave this, but uh, I'm going to show you just how to get those. So you get an on key. You can generate that from here and just copy. And we're going to replace this line here with a new key. We're going to do the same for the service role key. Uh, this is just to show you how it works. And you can generate that, copy, and paste it here, replacing this one. Okay, so we're going to use the same just for the sake of it, the same password here. And your tenant ID can be just a number, you know, uh, you can just put one. So here we're pretty much done. Uh, all the rest, you don't need to really change that. You can save this and we can go to our uh, GitHub page. And here you can see, so if you have a NVIDIA GPU, you can use this command. Uh, if you have an AMD GPU, uh, if you have only a CPU, such as uh, in this case, we're gonna copy this command and run it. So Python start services dash dash profile CPU. And this is going to take a moment to uh, to download and install the images. And we're going to just stay here and wait for that till it's finished. And we'll be back. So we're almost there. Here the containers are getting created. And you can see that uh, they're getting started one by one. Now it's pulling up uh, the containers for N8N, Redis, Search Engine, and all the rest. Now it's starting up the containers. It's also doing an N8N import, as you can see here. So this is important for your flows that you're going to start with, up with. We're not going to start with an empty N8N at the end, and we're going to have uh, also some some examples, some AI agents examples that we're going to start with. Uh, so everything has been started, as you can see, and now we can access these from our uh, web UI. So if you have those installed locally, you can uh, basically install the uh, access them from the local ports, which are listed here. So like, for instance, if you want to access uh, Kong, you would go to port 8000, for example. If you want to access Open Web UI, that would be port 3000. And uh, what we'll do is uh, also we'll install Portainer just for the ease of use for Docker. And I'm going to show you that in a second. So to install Docker, uh, so install Portainer, uh, we're going to go for two. Uh, basically two uh, commands which are here and I'm going to leave them in the comments down below. So I'm going to create and have that. And I'm going to show you a pro tip here. So just stay with me. If you want to expose all your services online and you don't want to open ports, you have a very uh, strict uh, firewall policy. So you can do this and have your domain linked to Cloudflare and from there, open up, uh, have a new tunnel built. And I'm going to show you this in a second, how it works. 
So if we go here and you can see that I'm logged into one dot dash dot cloudflare.com and this is where you can basically make some tunnels so we're gonna create a new tunnel here and select cloudflare we're gonna name that uh, lightning stack AI and from here we're gonna create a new tunnel this tunnel will allow us to expose all our surfaces to our uh, domain names and we can uh, basically have different domain names for this. Uh, so we're gonna go for Debian here, 64, and you can just copy this, go to your terminal again, paste that, and you should be up and running in few seconds. So there you go, you're connected, you can go next, and now you can say, okay, I wanna expose, I wanna first expose Portainer, Portainer 1, and we're going to use HTTPS for this, it's going to be, so for everything inside Docker, you want to use this, you can use this address, which is the, like, uh, the main uh, Docker uh, IP address activate this so no TLS verify once you've done this you can access your uh, portainer here and I'm gonna show you what portainer is it's very useful when you want to manage your docker instances so there we go we have our portainer I'm gonna set up a a pretty complex password it doesn't accept easy passwords here so you're gonna have to set up something complex with uh, capital letters and uh, also special characters and so here click on get started with a local environment local and you should see that we have already have 24 containers here right so these are the part, the containers that we used. We're going to show all. And you can see that we have all our stack already installed all in one place. So now what we're what is left to do is just to expose these ports. And this is what we're going to do. So for flow wise it's going to be 3001. So we can just add another one and say flow. Okay http this time and we'll say 3001 we save this and we can go ahead and expose also n8n at 5678 we're gonna do the same here and just change the port 5678 right save host name And it's uh, let's see. Okay. So if we test this and eight dot our domain name, we should end up with the with the web UI for this. And we're gonna set up a password here. We don't want to receive these and we can save that. So here you can see we already have three agents ready to roll, right? So if we go to the first one, this is our local rag agent. You can also, and this is using Olama, the Postgres. We should set up our credentials here. Create new, local host, and we'll say, it's not a local host actually. We're gonna set the same as before, 0 0.1. This is the magic IP. All right, you can see that the test is successful and we can get our model that has been already downloaded as well. So magical, right? You don't need to worry about that. Got you covered. 
So from here, we can see that uh, we have our uh, children's agents uh, where you're going to have to also to set some credentials. So we're going to create those. And if you have set up uh, an API key before, uh, you would put it here in the, in the API part. Otherwise, you just have to enter the same .17.0.1, but the port is 6333. Uh, you can see the ports basically in here. Uh, so Qdrens, you can see that ports coming up. And if we save this, yeah, connection tested successfully. So we're connected to our Qdrens, uh, to our uh, Qdrens vector database. So to uh, configure Postgres, we'll need to go here and we'll need to uh, add new credentials. So when you add new credentials, you need to replace the host name with the one from Superbase. So you can see here Postgres and we're going to take this host name here and we'll set it up instead of the local host. So we'll leave the database as Postgres, user Postgres, password is our super duper password. Let's try this now. Okay, all good. Now we can close this, save all of this, and we can test our workflow. And this is all running locally. Here our flow is triggering. Uh, we're running on a CPU, and you can see that the CPU here is on high usage right now. It's just four CPUs, as you can see, so not much. And there we go, we got our response, and this is basically our flow here ready for you to use so let's create our uh let's create our open web ui subdomain so let's say open and this is going to be on port 3000 that you saw save that and Let's test it out. Okay, we're up and running, can create our account and we're good. So we've created our account and we already have our models exposed here. So you can see that we can directly talk to them and say, hi. Hello. So thank you guys for watching this video and I hope you like the content. Please like, subscribe and comment down below. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer that and I'll hope to see you back in the next episode. Thank you. Cheers.